thank our sponsor, Parati's Quality Meats, located in Cranford, New Jersey, serving customers all over New Jersey for the past 50 years. Welcome to another edition of Coaches Talk, presented by the Shore Football Report. And tonight's special guest is Lakewood Piners head football coach, the one and only LJ Clark. LJ, thanks for coming tonight and talking a little Lakewood Piner football. Thank you. Uh, just super humbled to be on your show, man. Oh, it's uh, it's great. Let, you're a great guy. Uh, we've had a lot of great experiences through my tenure of coaching, and I'm excited to have you on the show. So, LJ, let me introduce every uh, you to everybody out there. Uh, LJ Clark is going into his 15th season at Lakewood overall, and he's the 11th season going in as the head football coach, correct? Correct. Awesome. The, the thing that, that's very impressive from my end, seeing what you did, is you kind of were in there when they, you were had an 0-33 record, a losing drought, right? And the thing, that, the thing that really impressed me with you was not only were you there through the bad times, you went in two years, became the head football coach, and to me, you turned it around. You turn around. But in between the 0-33 and you being a head coach, you got to coach with a legendary football coach in Warren Wolf, the winningest coach in the state of New Jersey. How was that experience with you? Uh, again, it, it was super humbling because if anybody knows Coach Wolf, uh, X's and O's, he, he could talk with the best, but he just taught me how to be a better person uh, and, and just be a better man. And – Simple things like he, he told me, you never let a kid go home mad at you. You keep him accountable. You, you be hard on him, but you make sure you talk to that kid that you yelled at at practice and you never let him go home mad at you. And I remember one time at Lakewood, he uh, he got on a kid. The kid didn't do, do what he was supposed to do. And he didn't get a chance to say goodbye to the kid and, you know, pick him up. We got in the car and he made me drive him to the kid's house and tell the kid that he was sorry he was trying to get it the best out of him. And I just saw that as like, wow, here's the winningest coach of all time that doesn't know any of these kids from Lakewood anything. And for him to go out of his way and truly meant it, it, it just it just spoke volumes of, of his character and how good of a man he was. And I, I was just super grateful and humbled just to be around someone of that, that legacy and, and to be, you know, he just I, – I can't rave. I can't say enough about him. I mean, I mean, your program's been blessed. Think of that. Ha ha getting Warren Wolf in one year uh, had to be so such 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 an incredible experience for not only yourself but most importantly the kids too. Yeah, I mean, again, someone of, of that greatness. Uh, just everybody coming to see him, and then introducing to the kids. The kids in the program just got so much exposure. I mean, they did an NFL film, an NFL film story on Coach Wolf about him breaking the losing streak at Lakewood. Yeah. I mean, they, you know, how, how surreal is that you're at practice and NFL films is there recording and taping you and watching the kids. Like, the, the whole atmosphere and the whole seriousness of football he just brought to Lakewood was, you know, second to none, man. And I, I like I get God rest his soul, mm -hmm. uh, you know, great guy. And, and, you know, I just can't thank him enough for, for what he does, what he did for the township of Lakewood. Yeah. I mean, we're going to talk about the process in your resume in, in a couple of minutes, but I mean, um, just, I think it's amazing that when you speak to these kids, uh, at Lakewood, you've been there in the roughest times. You not only you went to high school there, but you were there when they were in a 33-game losing streak. And to where you are now, sometimes you need to look back on where you were at to, to where you are now, and it's quite amazing because you're talking about a spurt of 13 years. You were 0-33 to right now. I mean, you guys are going to be contending for a conference championship this year. So I think that's incredible, and I think it's, it's something – that kids need to know what it was like because now where you're at, it isn't that bad what, what, what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. No, I mean, we, it, it's plenty of times, you know, the last couple of years we haven't been successful as we like, and uh, we sit the kids down, and instead of watching a team bonding movie, I'll put on an NFL film and show the kids, like, you don't know what it's like losing two straight seasons plus the last seven of the of three, basically three years of just losing. Every single game. And, and, and as a man, quite frankly, 
even though I wasn't the head coach, you come to work and you start digging this yourself. And you, you know, am I, am I meant to coach? Should I be coaching? Maybe someone better could do a better job than me. Uh, all those things cross your mind. But I will tell you this though, and, and my parents, God rest my mom's soul, and my father, they they instilled in me to never give up mm-hmm. and, and and fight and fight and fight and. When you lose 33 straight games, you know, you have to look in the mirror and and, and you really have to dig from within. Because, I mean, I could have went to other programs easily and just been an assistant coach at this program or that program. But just being from Lakewood and having a sense of pride, you know, I, I just always thought that we can pull it out. And, you know, I've been blessed that then I've coached a number of kids that gone on to do great things, not, not even size football, just great things in life. And I, I've been super blessed, man. I've been super blessed to just become head coach and not only win games, but change lives and them change my lives also. Yeah. I mean, we're, we, we're kind of harping on a little bit of the, the, the negative times and we're making it in a positive, but I want to talk about your success too at Lakewood. I, as a head football coach, am in awe of what you did because I knew where you were at and you were, you took them to the playoffs six times. You were two times division champs. But the thing that I'm most impressed with, which I love, you know, I work a lot with college recruiting, is that you go all out and and really, really try and make as many opportunities as possible with college football recruiting. You put 35 kids in the college football programs. You got guys playing in the pros. I mean, there you can go to Lakewood. You've proved you can go to Lakewood, move to the next level, and even play at the highest level, the NFL. How proud are you of your guys, your student athletes at Lakewood, for being able to do that? I'm super. I'm super proud. And, and again, uh, at Lakewood, when you become the head coach, you have to wear a bunch of different hats. And um, you know, a lot of these, a lot of kids, we're families we're dealing with, you know, are broken families, and maybe there's not a male role model or, or a father figure there. So I feel when you're the head coach. I feel that if more coaches like yourself should dig in harder for kids because I've learned with dealing with college coaches, it's just putting your kids out there, you know, just getting the exposure. Mm-hmm. I mean, from, from begging and, and, and just fundraising to get kids to go to the temple camp. I mean, just a quick, you know, I, we fundraised to get kids to go to temple camp and Chappelle Russell, his name was cook in high school. He, we raised money for a bunch of kids to go to that camp. His sophomore year, he had a great camp at Temple, and he got his first offer. He ended up getting about 20-something offers, oh, yeah. but he stuck with Temple. But if we won a fundraise, maybe he wouldn't have got – you know you know how it goes. Mm-hmm. You get that one, and then they all start rolling downhill. But I, I found that the, the, the most the most pleasure I get is not the Amir Tylers, the Tyrese's, the Josh Lesens, the Chappelle's. It's, it's the Division three kids. It's the Division two kids. It's the junior college kids that you can get because the, those good players are great players. They're the easy ones to sell. Mm-hmm. Everybody in America, Amy or Tyler, senior year, was coming to Lakewood High School. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would have 40 to 50 coaches a day there. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's the other, the hidden gen kids that are the tweeners. That um, I, I, Like a kid we had last year, his name is Javon McDaniels. Great kid, good student. You're not big enough to play Division One, but – found a home with FDU, had a bunch of Division three schools after him, happened to like FDU, got a really long, really good with the coach, and, you know, he, he, he'll be going there at 10 next year. Those are the kids that I get the most pride out of and the most satis- I'm most satisfied about is those type of kids because coming from Lakewood, it's so many kids that could have went to college that I don't want to say the coaches or whoever didn't push or they didn't know how to do it. Me, myself, I didn't go to college right out of high school because I didn't have college core credits because I didn't take science with a lab in high school. I didn't know any better. You know, the guidance counselor asked me, do you want gym five days or four days? Of course, I said five. Mm -hmm. When my senior year was over, coaches came in. They were asking me, you know, what I like playing. And then when they looked at my transcript, my grades were good, but I didn't have college core credits because I didn't take science with a lab. So I had to go to junior college. And, and get my credits that way. And I always told myself, if I ever become a person in position, I will always make sure to get these kids in the right position. And then I'm not saying put them in easy classes so they get good grades. Mm-hmm. I'm just making sure that they have the, the the 16 core classes. And I've even learned, you know, you just tricks of the trade. You give them 19 instead of 16, and they only take the top 16. So if you did bad your freshman year, you can replace it, you know. You just learn tricks of the trade, and you put the kids in the best 
possible scenario to succeed. And, and, and like I said, I've been blessed because at the end of the day, the kids have to work hard. And all I do is I believe in them. You know, whatever I lack in X's and O's, I make up and, and just being there for my kids. I, I take great pride in being there for my, for my players. Now, former and present, there's nothing I won't do for them. And, I, and, and they truly know that. And like I said, I've been blessed to be around a bunch of good kids. Not great players, just good kids. But not just that, LJ. Uh, it, you, the way you turn it around was by watch me work and follow my lead. You coach other sports. You're always around their activities. They always see you all the time. And and again, you're you're going over over an extra during all star meetings, um, which people don't realize that you fight for your kids and you fight for other kids too. And Absolutely. also the and also the recruiting. You always want to create a a opportunity for a young man, even if it's not on your team too. And that's a credit to you. It really is. Absolutely. I mean, like I said, I've been really, truly blessed to have had some really good players. And the best thing about my players is that when they go to college, most of them, and I would say a good percentage of them, graduate and they get on the field. So and you know with dealing, because you've had some great players in your program, when you deal with coaches and they take your word as goal because the kids that you sent them have done great. Right. So if they'll ask me about a kid from Barnegat, hey – you know, how is the, you know, the Manny Bowen kid? Oh, man, he's a stud. He does this, this, and this. Or how is uh, the Sinjin Urson kid? He's a, he's a dude. He works hard. Seems like a really nice kid. It's a big difference from when you or I speak to the coaches and say it from a coach that doesn't have any – I don't want to say he doesn't have any credibility, but he hasn't had a player at that level in their program. So it means a lot more coming from me. And I haven't had that those type of players in the last couple of years, and I still get as many calls as I have. Hey, coach, what do you think about this kid? And yeah. Yeah. you know, I, like you said, I push for everybody. If you're in Ocean County, Monmouth County, a short conference kid, and, and and I know you're a head coach, and he said you're a good kid, I'm going to try to push you to 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 the cows come home. You know what I mean? It's funny. It's funny. It's called reputation. And if you have a good reputation, and you sell the right product, and and again, the kids have to also hold their end of the bargain. You know, Absolutely. high character. It's not it's not just scoring touchdowns. But when you have a reputation, like you said, the college coaches, they still stay in contact with me. So when I when I stepped down, it was incredible how many people, college coaches, were um, messaging me, you know, um, about me stepping down. Absolutely. When I – three weeks ago, I messaged all my college contacts on my phone. Again, I didn't have Division One A recruits every all the time so uh -huh. they may be all over the place so i messaged like 800 people in in a three-day span and and them messaging me back that they love what i'm doing here with this the short yeah. football report they want me to give them a list yeah, uh, i think it's great what you're uh, doing. give it, i'm, I'm going to be giving a list to college football programs of the best talent in this area every all levels and all that stuff but again it comes down to reputation and 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 it kind of comes full circle because yeah. the kids you could sell sell a product, which if one guy goes with it, the kid has to be make sure that he holds his end of the bargain. And, and, and it works it works both ways too. Like I've had coaches come in and I've said like, "Hey, listen, the kid's not accountable. He comes from a you know his, his family life is not very good. His grades aren't very good. I'm being honest with you." And sometimes the coaches say, hey, you know, maybe we could work something out. And if it does, it doesn't. But I'm not going to say, oh, this kid's a good kid. He's a great kid. And then you get in like, coach, what are you doing? Well, that's one of the traits we talked about in my one of my other films was uh, potential. Like you yeah. might say he might have some damage and, um, you know, some traits. But but the word potential is they might be able to overlook that because yeah. something else they like is that maybe mm -hmm. it's the stature of the guy and all that. Let's get into the next section right now. You did a real nice job uh, talking right now. This session, right, this section right here is called the process. To me, this is the most important part of the interview is when I hear and the fans hear how you got to where you're at. Cause you don't just snap your finger and you become a head football coach. You need to work and grind to get to your spot because nothing comes easy. And you know that. Absolutely. So a lot of people don't realize that when you become the head football coach, you had steps to take. Please during this session right here, which I call the process, talk about your steps on how you got 
to be the head head football coach at Lakewood uh, High School and right from the beginning? Well, I mean, it it goes back to what I tell the kids. If you really love the sport, the sport will love you back. You you, you can't cheat the game of football or any other sport for that matter. And when I was in college, I was a Division III football player, and my senior year was coming up. And, you know, I I was – I'm very fortunate to have a very good high school. He was a very good short uh, short conference football coach, Richie Bosca, a great guy. I respect how, like, he's right underneath my father as a man that I respect. Great guy, great guy. And, you know, he came up to me and, and, you know, I was a a senior. I was a four-year starter. I would make the singles for defensive backs and the calls. And, you know, I, I was always a student of the game. I always knew what what offense they were running, what defense they were running. I I watched film a whole bunch. And he always told me, like, oh, you're going to be a really good coach someday. And I looked at him like, yeah, okay, coach. And he was like, listen, I was a history teacher for years. You know, what do you plan on doing? And I was just like, you know, I like history. So then I started taking history courses. And I I was like, you know what, maybe I'll be a history teacher. So then I started substituting. And my former uh, teacher, who was the athletic director at the time, was Mrs. Sweeney. And, you know, she was like, oh, LJ, you were a good student. You know, would you be interested in coaching baseball? Which I played baseball, basketball, and football at Lakewood. And I was like, uh, yeah, but I really want to, you know, I don't really know about coaching. And a good friend of mine who was the head coach, uh, Gene Drumwright, was like, oh, man, you know, come on, give it a shot. And I really had a great time coaching baseball. I, co- I started coaching baseball first. And it just – something natural just came with helping kids. And I was like, Hey man, like this isn't a bad gig. And then a football job opened up that spring. I mean, I'm sorry, that fall. And they offered me the freshman coach. And ever since then, man, I, I, I just love seeing the kids succeed. And like I said, if you love the game, you know, as a division three player, it's only so far you can go. I knew I wasn't going to the NFL and, the only way I could stay around the game was to coach it. And uh, I've got so much pleasure. You know, as a man, everybody wants to win. It's just to see kids who have so much talent. And when you believe in a kid and he believes in you and he succeeds. And, and that, I think that's the greatest thing coaching is when, you know, the easiest, easiest thing to do is if you play poker, anybody can win with four aces. Well, one question, it's- though, Coach. I want to know the connection and how you became from Warren Wolf when he when he when he passed the torch to you and said, you know, uh, I, I'll be honest, you know, when, uh, I never wanted to be a head coach, but I, I coached basketball, uh, under another legend, John Pop Richardson. And he instilled so many things in me and I played for him. And then I got the, the opportunity to coach another legend, which was Randy Holmes, which is a really good friend. Mm-hmm. And I, I looked at all the teams that were decent in the shore. You, you had Neptune, you had Asbury. I'm like, our basketball program is top in the state. And how come we aren't winning in football? So when I was an assistant, I would push, push, push. And then I was like, man, we could turn this thing around. So when the former coach stepped down, I put in to be the head coach. And then the athletic director, who I respect so much, was Mr. John Craddock's sat me down and said, hey, listen, and like, we're, we're going to give the job to, uh, you know, Mr. Wolf. And I and, and to be honest with you, at first I was kind of salty because I'm like, he's not a Lakewood guy. I put my time in. I played here. <laughs> and then Mr. Craddock looked at me and said, what job in the, short, in the state of New Jersey is Warren Wolf going to go for and not get? And I sat <laughs> back and I was like, you know what? You're 100% right. And he said, do you know how much you can learn from this man in one day? And I, and I said, you know what, Mr. Cracks, I, I'll stick, I, you know, you're right. And it was the best decision I made because in that one year, like I said, he just taught me how to be a better man among among young men and how to manage stuff. And, and he also, one of the biggest things he did, he showed me how to trust other people. Because when you're a college kid coming out of college and you think you know everything and you don't want to trust no one, but he entrusted other people and he showed me that you can't do everything. You got to trust your assistant coaches. Yeah. And I mean, delegate. Uh, delegate. He, yep. he retired from coaching, and it was between me and Tommy Carroll, who was a stud athlete and, uh, you know, an NFL prospect in Miami, won a uh, national championship, was all state, was a great football player, and is right at Lakewood. And, you know, I, I got the nod, and, and I, like I get, I, I was just very, very fortunate to be at your alma mater to be the head coach. I mean, that's everybody's dream if you're as a football player. 
That's awesome. That's a great story. Um, you know, um, going, coming, be, playing, playing ball, going to school at Lakewood, and then eventually replacing the all-time winningest football coach in state history to become your alma mater head football coach. That's a great Absolutely. job. LJ, nice job. Okay, LJ, I'm going to, first of all, take this thing off right here. All right. This se section right now is about the COVID. I am sick and tired of talking about the negativity of COVID. You know, as well as I know, as football coaches, everybody wanted football to stop and not play across the country. But us coaches, we kept everything positive and, and we were able to fortunately have a football season, which a lot of states didn't have. But we all learned something positive with the COVID. Okay. Can you tell me something that your football program or yourself, what you found positive in the COVID season last year? I mean, at Lakewood, everything we do, and my assistant coaches included, we always try to do life lessons. And I think this is one of the biggest life lessons we learned this year is with the COVID is, is the kids kept each other accountable. What I mean with that is, you know, it just took one kid to ruin the whole season and not – do what he was supposed to do, not wear his mask or not be, you know, be around different type of kids, not fill out his questionnaire. And, and I think our kids really bonded this year with, we had, we had a tight knit group and they always did the right thing. You know, we were one of the few programs that really didn't have like a major outbreak of, of COVID because I think our kids did the right thing. At the end of the year, we ended up uh, having a kid who had COVID, but, um, our kids did the right thing, you know, coming to school. And we were one of the few schools that went to school seven, uh, five days a week, yeah. full from 7 to one thirty. So, you know, I had our football players sit with each other in the classrooms as long as it was okay with the teachers, with the glass and everything. But even outside of school, um, the kids kept each other. My captains kept, hey, don't go to this party. Don't do that. You know, make sure your questionnaire's on time before you come to practice. And I really just thought that, it taught our kids how to be accountable in life. And, you know, if you're not accountable as a young man, it's going to be tough for you as an adult to be accountable. You know, if you're late to work or you're not accountable as a father, you miss payments, you know, you can't keep a roof over your head. And I really thought it, it was a good life lesson this year for the kids to be accountable and, and do the right thing. Oh, that's a great man. That's great. So accountability was the most uh, important thing that you thought that was positive. Absolutely. In Lakewood. Absolutely. Nice job, coach. Okay, now we're going to talk 2021 Lakewood High School football schedule. Coach Clark, take it from there. Yeah, I mean, usually uh, last year was a, obviously it was an odd year with COVID. We played a bunch of teams we normally don't play. You know, being in B South uh, all my years as the head coach. The only team we're playing this year is Pylance from B South. So, you know, the schedule this year we open up at Point Burr. I mean, at Point Beach, which you know. It could go either way. Point Beach, you know, they haven't been as successful as they want to be in the last couple of years. But I, I spoke with their coach, and he's trying to do the right thing. So mm -hmm. I, I expect them to come out and give us our, their best shot. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, again, you know, years when Coach Wagner was there, they've been very successful. So I know that they have the talent in the town. So I'm looking for, you know, a, a good competitive game that day. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we play Pylands at Lakewood. Um, last year, Pylands beat us. Um, and – Kudos to their coaches. They did a great job out coaching me and my staff. And, um, you know, they, they're, the system they ran gave us a problem. So hopefully this year we'll be prepared for that. And Coach, real quick, I've noticed it's a night game too. You want to talk a little bit about bringing in the lights for that game? Yeah. Um, I, you know, again, uh, our athletic director, uh, Oscar Oriana, he's doing a great job trying to uh, do some different things with the sports programs and updating our, our facilities. And he, he, you know, he fundraises, he's a great fundraiser as a former uh, head coach of the wrestling team. And we're going to have a night game at Lakewood and we don't have lights. So we, he fundraised to get lights and uh, get them around the stadium. And we did it last year for central and it came out, it came out awesome. It was a really good time. A mm -hmm. lot of people come out. Um, it's a Saturday night game at six and a lot of teams don't play on Saturday, so you usually get a good crowd in Ocean County and other teams. So I'm looking forward to it to being a, a, a very competitive game. Nice. And then we uh, we, we played Mammoth at home again. We played them last year, and uh, we were very fortunate to sneak out a win. 
Um, you know, Coach Wendell does a very good job mm -hmm. with the with his talent that he has there. And Monmouth always has a, a couple of very good athletes. And uh, again, this should be another competitive game. We, you know, we, we got very fortunate last year and, and fought through adversity to end up with a win. And then we play a away game at Keensburg, which, you know, I have nothing but respect for Coach Bird and his staff. They, they've been doing a good job of winning what they have there, a small group one school. But I think probably, you know, in our division, it's probably going to be one of the tougher tougher games we play just because they have a couple of kids returning from all shore teams in previous years. And, you know, Coach Bird's staff does a great job of, of detail and their scout reports and, and the way they coach their kids are always well prepared. So mm -hmm. I look forward to a, a really a really good uh, matchup there. Mm -hmm. And then we play Keyport at Keyport, which we were supposed to play last year. But um, unfortunately, uh, Keyport had a couple of COVID cases and we didn't end up playing. But we scouted them and they have a really good uh, wide receiver who, who's very talented. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure he's been working his butt off trying to get better for this year. So he's going to be a real challenge for us to stop. So I know they're going to have a couple tricks up their sleeve to get him the ball. And he's going to be a tough, tough matchup for us. And then our last game will be home. Our last regular season game home versus uh, another B-South old rival is Manchester. And, you know, Coach Wilkinson did a very good job last year with, with turning that program around and them getting a bunch of wins. And Manchester has a very talented skill package with quarterback, wide receivers, and, and running back. So, you know, close, close, and, you know, I wouldn't say a, ro I wouldn't say a robbery, but, you know, bragging rights for borderlines. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of families that live in Lakewood that move to Manchester mm -hmm. or vice versa. And the kids know each other from going to school and playing, you know, other sports. So I, I think it's going to be a super competitive game. Probably be our last home games. It might be. So it could be senior day. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of motions going through. So I, I think that's going to be a, a very good test for our program. And then with the short conference pod, I mean, hopefully we can have a, a good winning season. And, you know, we're, you know, as you know, I'm willing to play anybody. With my 25, 30 kids, you know, I've never backed down from playing the Rumsons, the Bricks, you know, the Walls, whoever. Sometimes, you know, we, we haven't been as competitive as I like, but I think that uh, we have a decent shot of being competitive in the pop play. And then if, if everything goes accordingly, hopefully, we you know, we can make the playoffs again and kind of resurrect our program back to where it needs to be. And then hopefully pick up another game that Thanksgiving Day week, you know, maybe not Thanksgiving Day, but that week of Thanksgiving. Yeah, and, um, and, and, the, and the, key, the key to your season, and we'll talk more about your, your 2021 team in a couple minutes, but is health. If you stay healthy, LJ, with this, and it's a very, very competitive, competitive schedule, um, you got a chance. And that's all you want is for your players to have a chance. Yeah, I mean, our, our 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 conference this year is the first time in a long time where, you know, where we're we're lining up and we're going warming up, and we look across the, the other sideline and they don't have eighty kids, eighty kids or yeah. seventy kids <laughs> are twenty five thirty. So the numbers will be similar with the uh, the Keyports, the Kingsburgs, the Pinelands, the Point Beaches, uh, Monmouth and Manchester might have a, a few more players than us, but they'll be in a similar boat as us right. as far as, you know, you're talking numbers where, again, sometimes, you know, football is a war of nutrition where you could play, you know, the Rumsons and the Bricks, and then with 30 kids, you, you know, someone gets banged up and then it changes the whole dynamic yeah. of your program because I'm not fortunate at other, at other programs where my backups, my one and twos, it's a, it's a huge drop off. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, a lot of kids might go both ways, which, you know, like you said, if yeah. one kid gets hurt, it could, you know, yeah. it could change the season in a, in a blink of an eye. And then, and then, Coach, um, now the unique thing that the Shore Conference does is every year, for the past couple of years, they just reshuffle divisions according to group sizes, according to strength of, of your programs in the prior years, and they now put you in the national. And the national – by just looking at it, and I'm going to have another se section, uh, another video where I'm going to talk about details of each division. But looking at it, it's a, you have a chance to really make some noise in, in this division. A lot of teams are all going to be competitive, uh, you know, a couple of points here or there. You got Keensburg, Keyport, Lakewood, Monmouth, Pinelands, and Point Beach. 
you know, a, a bunch of newer teams that you're playing? Are you excited about playing this competition? Uh, yeah, I, again, you, you know, um, sometimes, you know, as a coach, you got to kind of swallow your pride and you got to, you kind of got a fair fight now. You know, they got 30 kids. We have 30 kids where sometimes as a coach and when I was a younger coach, you know, I'll play anybody with my 25 kids, but then, you know, you'll play the bigger schools. And then when you go play someone your size, you got four kids banged up and they can't play now. And you would have might've won those games if those kids wouldn't have got banged up playing versus, you know, a, a, a bigger team or a group four or a group five school that we had no business playing versus anyway. But now that the, the number game is, 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 is a similar thing. You know, like I said, I think we, mm -hmm. we, we could be competitive in every game this year. Yeah. And, you know, that's not saying we'll win the division. I think we could beat everybody in division. But at the same time, I think we could lose everybody in the division. And I, so, think, I think a lot of teams are saying the same thing. The, eight, the athletic directors made competitive divisions where, like you said, you can win or you can lose depending on whatever happens during the season. And, and that's what they're doing. They're trying to create competitive uh, divisions with competitive games every week. Yeah. I mean, in years past, uh, you know, we've had really, really good teams and the the dynamics of Lakewood is changing and we're not getting those type of kids anymore, which, you know, me and my staff, especially myself, we, I have to do a better job of getting my kids ready to play. But I, I, I kind of, at first I wasn't, I was kind of like, oh, why don't they just leave it where it is? But I kind of like what they're doing because they're taking accountability now of looking where, hey, Lakewood might not have, you know, those four all short kids coming back next year. Let's put them in this bracket where when you have divisions, sometimes you kind of get stuck and you might have a good year and mm -hmm. then you have five bad years in a row. That's really not fair to the kids to just get, you know, not given a fair opportunity where now everybody in this division has the opportunity to, to win the division. And even, even if they lose, it won't be – demoralizing and, and and like you know if you lose it'll be a close game or be competitive it won't be you know running clock by halftime or something yeah, and that's all and that's all you can ask for you know yeah, LJ, I, really nice really nice job talking about your uh schedule and the national division uh it's always great to hear it from a head coach's voice uh you know given their summary uh, of what they're doing uh for this year all right thank you very much Okay, now we're going to talk 2021 Lakewood football. And I got a question for you before we talk about your returning players. I want you to tell the audience what offensive and defensive scheme you run, and then let's talk about your returning players that you're real excited about. Uh, on offense, you know, we, we do a bunch. We don't do too much, but we, we, we kind of finagle the little system. It's – Shotgun wing T-ish, but it also has a little bit of a single wing yeah, aspect to it. Uh, we try to get, you know, it's a numbers game. We try to put as many blockers as we can. If you overload, then we pass. It's just a numbers game. And, and defensively, uh, we try to play to our strengths. You know, we we, we want to create a fast break on, on, on a football field. So we're trying to bring as much pressure as we can possible. And we have kids who can cover. So we're not really a sit back. We're more of an attack aggressive and, and on offense too our, our styles have to mimic each other on, on offense and defense we're we're more aggressive than, than anything now one thing coach now playing against you for all those years it's very difficult scheme when you got a quarterback not handing the ball off and then booting away where he's getting it and he's going and he's running so you now have an extra blocker at the point of attack plus the pass game because that kid we know can throw the football. Okay, right. so now you got a quarterback that's going to run it with an extra blocker, and now you have the receivers running routes. That's a pretty tough scheme to do when you're healthy, right? Absolutely. I mean, uh, the last couple quarterbacks I've had have uh, all been all short kids. Uh, I mean, you, you know, you start with Chappelle, Russell. I mean, I, I mean, you shoot, you can start with Tyrese before that. Mm -hmm. Then you start with Chappelle. Then, you know, I, I've been fortunate. I had Zaire Jones, who was a first-team All-State kid. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I had T.J. Paterzo after them, who was more of a runner. And mm -hmm. he was a third-team All-Shore kid because he was, I think, third or third or fourth in shore and rushing. Mm -hmm. And then last year I had a sophomore, Javon Gonzalez, who I think could be just as good as him. Uh, he reminds good. me a lot of Zaire, Zaire Jones. Uh, he brings that type of dynamic he's, he's where quick. he can run it well. 
He's quick, and, and man. He's awkward too because he's left-handed. So yeah. can you? Let, let, I want now. I want to hear about what really gets you excited about the returners, the guys that I keep hearing about in the off season. Now I want you to tell everybody on our talk show talk about your returners that you got. Uh, returning players, like you know, we, we kind of mentioned them a little bit. Uh, it, it all starts with him, is Javon Gonzalez. Uh, as a sophomore, we kind of kept it nice and easy for him, but as a junior coming back, I think last year he was like five. Five nine one sixty. He went and got his physical the other day. He was six one in the six one in the quarter one one eighty seven, uh, and he ran pretty hard last year. So we 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 opened some stuff up for him this year, and we ex- kind of it's you know gave him the keys to the Mercedes let, this year mm-hmm. and, and let him go a little bit. Where last year we kind of held him back just to let him learn the system. And then um, you know our offensive line is is one of I think will be one of the better offensive lines around. Uh, we got a lot of people coming back. They took a lot of pride this year. I mean, uh, I spoke to you on the phone. At, we were lifting weights December first outside, and it, it was freezing. It's it snowing outside, and they were outside running and training since they just you know got tired of losing, and they have a kind of chip on their shoulder. So our offensive line is going to be a strong point. And then we have a four-year senior, a four-year starter senior, and Andre Peace who's one of the fastest yeah. kids in the shore, oh, yeah. who really dedicated himself this year and, and getting better shape and putting on some muscle. And I expect him to uh, be one of the t- top players in the shore conference this year. Yeah. One question. One question. Um, you, you have a unique situation where you coach your son. Okay. Mm-hmm. I want to I wanted hear about the relationship um, on and off the field. Does he call you coach? Does he call you dad? Is this something that he's used to? Because I know he's always grown up with your program, right? Now. Absolutely. I mean, you you got to be on cloud nine coaching your son um, for for now. His going into his senior year, going into his senior year. Um, you know, uh, uh, again, it's it's tough, but you know, you know, I, I was very fortunate that my father was very hard on me in the right ways and instilled a lot of things in me, and I try to mimic those things with my son and. Uh, the, the greatest thing about my son, I can say, is that he's a coach's son and he makes all the calls on the line and he understands the game a lot more so than I did at his age because my father wasn't a head football coach. So he watches film with me. He breaks film down. So he, he's very he's a two year captain. He, call, uh, he texts everybody. He puts the emails out the Google Classroom. He, he, he's a very good leader. And mm-hmm. Academically, he's a honor student, three seven. Wow. You know, that's what I'm. By all, I'm most impressed with that. But you, you know, the good thing about it is that when you coach football and your kids play, you don't get to watch them play. So I'm fortunate enough that every game I get to watch my son. And this year, to be honest with you, I got offered a really good job, and the deal breaker was that I wasn't going to be able to watch my son senior year. And I didn't leave because of that. And uh, like, you know, my son is my best friend. Like we we have a very good relationship, but at the same time, I'm super hard on my son. I'm the biggest critic. Like he'll get graded out at 87 or 90. And I'll be like, that snap was a little bit to the right. You should have hit him right. You messed the play up because now the block, the the pull and guard didn't get there because the quarterback had to reach over. And he's like, it wasn't that bad. I'm like, it was that bad. So I'm super hard on him where other people think that I just give him. And a, a quick little story on that. My son wasn't even supposed to play center. The kid who we had penciled in to play center went on vacation that year, and we had to go scrimmage brick. And my son was the backup center, and he ended up playing very good. And our offensive line coach, who is the assistant head coach, Evan Bobbles, who I respect to the utmost, was like, I, you know, he should play center. He knows what he's doing. He knows all the calls. And – from there on, you know, he he, he, kept, he ran with it, and he'll be a three-year starter this year at center. He'll play a little more defense this year. And the reason he didn't play defense last year is because if he got hurt, we had no one to play center. Mm-hmm. So at him going into his senior year, we're going to use him a little bit more on defense, which he's a better defensive player personally anyway. I think in college he'll probably be a defensive player if he, if he chooses that route because he has some scholarship money academically already. But wow. that's up to him. And whatever he decides, there's no pressure on me for him to go play football. As long as he goes to school, I'll, I'll be grateful, man. Wow. That's, I mean, I mean, wow. These last 30 minutes, man, I got to know a little bit more about you. But hopefully the 
the uh, our, our fans out there also learn a lot more about you. LJ, you are a, uh, a a great piece for Lakewood and a great piece for the Shore Conference. I am a big fan of you and your program. You know I'm going to be covering your games, and I'll be talking to you throughout the weeks. You have a lot to be excited for. You have not only you're coaching your son, but you got a good group of guys coming back. You're in a new division. You know, there's a lot of newness going on. And, um, you know, you've taken the program from 0-33 to where it is right now. And in between, you've won a lot of football games and state playoff games, got kids into colleges. Let's just, you know, have a great season. Stay healthy. Stay healthy. Um, and, and, you know, make some great memories uh, this season in the 2021 season. you have anything else to say? I just, you know, like again, I'm, I'm truly am humbled to be on on your show and for you to even me to ask with all the other great coaches in the short conference that that they that, that are are now and and past that you'd ask me to come on. But uh, you know, you know, personally, you know, like I said earlier, every man wants to win, but I truly get pleasure and all the kids going to colleges, and um, you know, it's just the relationships for me with the kids. Uh, my mother passing away last year. Uh, I, I just got to see full heartedly how, how the kids really truly care about you because they, you know, my mother passed away and not even a half an hour later, half the football team was on my front lawn crying hysterically. And all my former players from Chappelle to the, the kid who didn't even get in are calling me, texting me, emailing me, sending flowers to my dad's house, sending food over there. Just shows you how much they really care. And, you know, I truly – that that's the best – thing I can say I mean at the end of the day the wins are nice but uh when you see your former players and they give you a big hug and, and they're actually doing good in life man that that's winning for me man that, that's winning for me that's the one thing when I stepped down I had a reporter ask me what am I going to miss the most it's the relationships absolutely I mean I mean yeah wins losses that's all great but it's waking up every day feeling like you're important for kids and and helping other people in your program or other people like you do. It's the relationships. And that's what it's all about. You know, we really do believe that football is like life skills, you know, and we got to got to do it. LJ, thank you very much for being thank on you, the greatest talk show in the Shore Conference. Absolutely. Coaches Talk presented by the Shore Football Report. And I can't wait to have more coaches on here like like yourself so other people in the Shore Conference could be proud of the coaches we have in the Shore Conference. Thank you, LJ Clark. Thanks, Coach.